Good morning. Welcome to the Church of England weekly service on this National Sports Sunday. I'm Libby Lane, Bishop of Derby, and I'm here at a tennis club uh, in my diocese with the Reverend Sarah Watson, who's uh, one of our pioneer curates. And part of her ministry is here at this tennis club and uh, other sports contacts across the diocese. Since last year, it's been my privilege to serve as the Church of England's lead bishop for sport. And so I'm well aware that sport is not just an activity for individuals, as important as that is, but is a whole community and a culture. So later in this service, Natalie Andrews will be in discussion with Dave Mail about how we, as the Church of England, have been encouraging sport to become more central to our mission, focusing on uh, seven pilots in our diocese, which are going to be taking place over the next few years. National Sports Sunday is in its fourth year, uh, coordinated by Sports Chaplaincy UK. And I'm really pleased that uh, Warren Evans, CEO of Sports Chaplaincy UK, will be bringing our message in this week's service. With over 600 chaplains across the UK, Sports Chaplaincy UK has been a great support as we have looked to raise up chaplains from within our churches. Sarah. Quite often when we think about sports chaplaincy, we just think about football. But at the start of our service, I want to challenge us to think beyond that. To think to the gym, golf, or even your local tennis club, like I'm doing. Our mission to the community of sport is not just for clergy, but for everyone. The note we want to strike in this service is to celebrate all that God is doing in the community of sport and to pray for it as we emerge from this pandemic. So let us open our service with that great hymn of praise, which reminds us that God's mercy and faithfulness is new each morning.
Good morning and a very warm welcome from Bradford to our National Sports Sunday service. My name is James Lusted and alongside being a presenter on the BBC Songs of Praise, I'm delighted to be an ambassador for Sports Chaplaincy UK, who is coordinating this year's National Sports Sunday. Thank you to Bishop Libby, the Church of England's lead bishop for sport, and Sarah Watson for their introduction to our service this morning. I'm now going to invite a good friend of ours, Natalie, who is the Church of England's Sport and Wellbeing Lead, and she's going to lead us in a time of confession. So we come now to a time of confession. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Natalie. And later in our service, Natalie will be in conversation with Dave Mayle, the Church of England's Director of Evangelism and Discipleship, to share briefly a little more about the work that they're doing. I have the privilege of now introducing Bishop Mike Royal, who is the co-chair of the Commonwealth Games Churches Together Working Group, along with the Bishop of Birmingham, Dave Urquhart. Bishop Mike will lead us in the collect of our special prayer for today. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find your forgiveness and know your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Sports Chaplaincy UK has been delighted to work with the Church of England over many years, but more strategically over the last couple of years. Dave Mayle and Natalie Andrews recently caught up to chat about how the new sport and wellbeing project is going. Hello, I'm Dave Mayle. I'm the Director of Evangelism and Discipleship for the Church of England. And I'm Natalie Andrews, the National Sport and Wellbeing Project Lead. So Dave, would you like to tell us a little bit about the background to the project? Yes, I love sport. This is actually my local tennis club. And um, I brought together a number of people to say, how can we connect uh, the world of the church with the world of sport? Over 60% of our population are involved every week in sport and wellbeing activities but only 2% are going to Church of England churches. So how could we help the church to connect with that huge sports community? I brought some people together and some organisations, and from that we grew some plans to help diocese draw up strategies to help them connect with that huge sports community. We realised that this was such an exciting project, we really needed someone to lead it. So last summer uh, we found Nat, and uh, not the easiest time to start Nat in the middle of the pandemic, uh, but tell us how it's been going. So we're working with seven pilot dioceses across the Church of England. We've got Blackburn in the north, we've got Birmingham in the Midlands, Gloucester, Norwich, Rochester, Guildford and London Kensington and it's fantastic to work with key representatives from each of those dioceses as well as para sports organisations um, such as Sports Chaplaincy UK and also Ridley Hall Theological College in Cambridge who are developing leaders in sports ministry and mission. But it's been fantastic to see what God's been doing throughout the pandemic and throughout the life of this project already. Even though we've had a really difficult start because of the pandemic, some of the dioceses have still been able to connect with people in and through sport. So for example, in Norwich, there's the Sports Factory 
and one of the sports ministers there has been able to create some Strava communities, enabling those people in the rural setting in which the churches and the benefits that he works for are set, and to encourage them to come along to um, go online and just say, actually, we're part of this community. So it's enabling a real buzz within, within that rural setting. But some of the people are saying, actually, no, we're not runners, so can we be part of this as well? So he's been able to set up a group for those who enjoy walking. So what we're finding and what we're seeing is that there are examples across all of the pilot dioceses of uh, the church, Christians being able to connect with people in and through sport. Our reading is taken from John chapter 17 verses 6 to 19 and this is Jesus praying to the Father. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks so much, guys. Come on, in this moment, we're just going to lift the name of Jesus high, so worthy of our worship. You're so worthy, Father. We glorify your name. Everyone needs compassion. Love is never fading. Let mercy fall on us. Everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of the Savior. The hope of a nation. My God is mighty to say, He is mighty to say, forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave.
I'm now delighted to welcome my friend and CEO of Sports Chaplain to UK, Warren Evans, to lead us in our message this morning as we think about how God calls us to go in and serve the community of sport. And before we do, let's just quickly pray. Father, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for the community of sport. And Lord, I just specifically pray for Warren as he brings your word this morning. I pray that you'll just uh, have our hearts open, uh, ready to hear from you and speak to us like you've never have done before. And I pray that it will just inspire us, encourage us and even change us to go into the community of sport and change sports life, God. We just thank you for him. Bless him as he brings his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, James. And hello, what a privilege it is to share from God's word this morning. Before I start, I just want to say to you, please lean in. Don't switch off if you're not a sport lover. It's not about sport. It's about God and people. So please stay tuned. As James says, I am Chief Exec of Sports Chaplains UK, which simply means I work with some wonderful leaders and people, both in and outside the church, seeing our community impacted in a positive way. As a charity, we are here to serve the local church and we have a dream. I believe it's a God-given dream, a dream to see an expression of his love and compassion in every community called sport. And sport's the, just the field that God has placed me in. But ultimately, I wanna say this, I wanna say an expression of his love and compassion in every community. Do you know the community of sport consists of 30 million men, women, and children? We all have preconceived ideas of sport. You may love it, you may love it, but today I simply want to say this, sport is more than an activity. It's a community of people. Matt Macaulay kindly read to us the scriptures from John 17, 6 to 19, which I want to share from, to, uh, share from today, but use it an acronym to help us remember and challenge and encourage us to not just be hearers of God's word, but doers of God's word. The acronym is simply a word which uh, is made up of letters. And so uh, on National Sports Sunday, the clue, uh, I'm gonna, it would be a remiss not to use the word sport. And it's not all about, uh, I remind you, it's not all about an activity, but it is about God and people. So sport, I want to use this visual aid. 
Just remember, just think of a, a seesaw. And we've got S, P, O, R, T. O is that pivotal point that I'm gonna come back to. But time's against us, so we're gonna crack on. S, S stands for C. My wife and I have three boys, and my oldest boy would watch those aid adverts, Christian aid, water aid adverts, and see children in desperate need and would cry and was moved with compassion. And because of this, we chose to sponsor three girls in different parts of the globe because it's morally, ethically, and spiritually right. Jesus saw the crowd and was moved, compelled with compassion to respond to their needs. I've got a question. What do you think when you see sport? Some may be moved with passion, others turned off. But I guess it's, it's not about, it, mostly what will be moved with compassion, that's for certain. But as the church of Jesus Christ, we should be culturally different. If we see a community no different to anyone else, are we any different? You know, in, in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, it says, God looks upon the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. You know, as people of God, we're called to be culturally different and to look not as everyone else sees. And I believe we are called to, to look at this decimated community through the eyes of a compassionate God. When we look at the kids clubs, the gyms, not just the elite, but the park runs, through the eyes of a compassionate God, when we do this, we see something differently. When we see something differently, we move with compassion, we respond differently. A moment's revelation demands a different response. So S stands for C. We can all choose to see differently, choose to see through the eyes of a compassionate God. P, P for prayer. Prayer is one of the most underused tools in our kit bag. If we see differently, we will also pray differently. And I wanna challenge you to pray for the community of sport, not just for wins, but you know, when you drop your kids off, your grandchildren off, when you go to the club, when you go to the gym, just simply say a prayer. Pray for them, pray for their families, but say a prayer. God, wherever you're at work, can I join in? Oh, is that pivotal point that we're gonna come back to later. So next is R. R is all about relationship. Missio Dei, the mission of God, sending, God sends his son, the son sends his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit sends us. You know, David Bosch says this, mission is not primarily an attribute of, uh, an activity of the church, but an attribute of God. God is a missionary God. God sent his son primarily so we could have a relationship with him. And that's what he's calling us to do the same, to be a signpost to a broken world, to Jesus, because he loves us. So, wow, that's so important. It's all about building relationships. You know, we've all heard those sayings, trust is not easily gained, but it's easily lost. You know, we've also heard that saying, people don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. Can I encourage you? to build that trust, to build relationships with your community, not to judge them. Mother Teresa says this, if you judge people, you have no, no time to love them. So please love your community. T, T is for transformation. Sport is in an eight in itself, but it does impact its, its wider community. When a club wins, pregnancy rates go up, the economy increases, but when it loses, you know, things like domestic violence go up. Why do I say that? Because sport impacts its wider community. And, but we're called to impact our community called sport. What with? Love, grace, and mercy. You know, so when we are carriers of God's presence, we are speaking his life and hope to people, and we can see and be and bring transformation. You know, if you want to see transformation take place, be the change you want to see. John Wesley, I'm gonna just get my notes here because it's a long quote, but it's a powerful quote, says this. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. I did say it was a pivotal, and we're gonna talk about O, and O stands for obedience. We can either obey God and his word, as indicated in John 17. We can choose, as verse, it talks about we are sent people. Uh, Great Commission in Matthew 28 says we're, we, we're called to go. We have a choice today. Hold your breath. We have a choice. We can either obey God and go, or we can choose to tell God to go get lost. Oh, that's a tough call, isn't it? But I believe 
with the power of the Holy Spirit, not in our own strength, we can go and make a difference. Sport. S is for C. See what God sees. Look at a community through his eyes of compassion. Pray, P, pray for that community of sport. Oh, it all hangs on obedience. Obedient to God and his word to go to a community. Ah, be intentional. Look and build long lasting relationships with our communities. T is transformation. When we do what God asks, we will see transformation take place. Be the change you want to see. Partner with God and make a difference. It's attributed to St. Augustine, and it says this, love God and do what you will. For when you love God, you'll do what God loves. God loves your community. Thank you. In a time of desperation, all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation when all is dark, you help us see you do that. There is only one salvation We believe We believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ we believe in the Holy Spirit And that is given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that it's conquered hell We believe in the resurrection And that is coming back again We believe Oh Lord, yes we believe
we believe in the Holy Spirit and that is given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that is conquered hell. We believe in the resurrection that is coming back again. We believe. Fantastic. What a great message. Thank you so much, Warren. And remember that, everyone. Sport. See, prayer, obey, relationships, transformation. Just fantastic. And also a huge thank you to our friends at Life Church for leading us in worship this morning. Thank you so much. Our next story comes from Ashley Gibb, who I'm delighted to introduce. She's a former athlete who has recently started exploring what it means to be a sports chaplain. Ashley has seen firsthand the challenge which exists within community of sports and is now looking to serve. So it's over to you, Ashley. Hi, my name's Ashley and I am a CrossFit and weightlifting um, athlete as well as a coach. So I've been involved in um, sport since I was a child. So it's kind of been my bread and butter for years. I was involved in competitive racing and then um, transitioned into CrossFit about nine years ago. Um, Within CrossFit, again, I've been super competitive. I um, was living in Thailand overseas for five years as a missionary. So I work with an anti-trafficking organization. And my particular passion and zeal was for introducing health and wellness and fitness to women who've been trafficked or who've been through sexual trauma. Um, And I wanted to bring to them the joys of well-being and being able to walk through that healing journey with them. But alongside that, I um, I was really involved in competing myself and training my body. So I used to have to spend about three hours in the gym preparing for competitions. And whilst I do believe that that was a gift, um, I believe that God um, really did call me into those arenas. I really think that he um, loved watching me PR my lifts. He loved seeing me under heavy barbells. But there were definitely moments where um, it became something of an idol for me. So I really had to check in on my heart to make sure, you know, what is my motive behind doing this? Um, Many, many years ago, I I suffered with an eating disorder. So I had anorexia when I was at university and body image was everything to me. If, um, you know, I was I was trying to control what I ate as um, I had all sorts of things going on, all sorts of my own trauma in my own life. And then when I transferred into the fitness industry, at times, this was just another place for a eating disorder to manifest itself. But it just looked like it was a little bit more healthy. Um, now, I do, again, believe strongly that God gave me health and well-being and a fitness community to walk through that healing journey with me. But like every good thing, if we hold on to that as our source of identity and pure source of healing, it is going to become um, a misplaced desire and a misplaced idol in our life. And that definitely is something that I struggled with. You know, when I was competing, it was my focus. I would walk in the gym and I would be really frustrated and stressed out if anybody would speak to me in the middle of my training session. And so I had to go on a real journey with it. And to be honest, I'm still on a journey with it now. You know, God has made it very clear that actually sports and fitness is my ministry. And um, if that's going to be the case, I need to make sure that first and foremost, God is the center. Uh, So when coming back from Thailand, I definitely um, kind of felt this stirring for um, reaching out to the fitness community in the way of chaplaincy. So I'm studying a course, um, a master's at the moment that has a module in chaplaincy. So I'm really excited to get to that, to that module. But God's made it very clear to me that when I go into the gym as a coach, um, into that gym every day, I am there as salt and light. And, you know, it's not about my training and what I can achieve that day. But if I go into my training and somebody, a member comes along and they want to talk to me because they haven't spoken to anybody in their day, then that is my time to leave aside what I'm doing and to focus on the individual and to focus on the one. Thank you so much, Ashley, for such a great and inspiring story. 
We're now going to come to a time of prayer and we're going to pray for the community of sport. And I'm delighted that two of my fellow ambassadors will lead us in that. And firstly, it's Jamie Jones Buchanan, who is an elite coach and former professional rugby league player for over 20 years. And of course, our friend Anne Wafula Strike, MBE, a former gold medalist in the Paralympic Games. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer and that you listen to our requests. On this National Sports Sunday, we give thanks for the community of sport. We thank you for the diversity of sport and the opportunities for well-being. We ask your blessing on all those who are part of this community, whether they know you or not. We ask that you would help us to see how we can respond and serve to the community of sport, especially if we're already a part of it. As we think about our world, we pray for those who are continuing to be affected by the ongoing pandemic. We pray for those involved in leadership in our nation to be continued to be guided in the next steps that they should take. We pray for the church and its leaders that we can speak words of hope to our world. We thank you that you work out all things for our good, even when we find it hard. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the community of sport and the opportunity that we have to serve. We pray this morning for all those who are chaplains within that community and for those you are asking to consider a role as a sport chaplain. We thank you for all those who serve in so many sports clubs and gyms. We pray for the doors to continue to open within the community of sport to bring your love and compassion. May those who serve in chaplaincy roles be prophetic in their ministry to the wider church. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now in a moment of silence, we bring to God those things which are on our hearts. This morning, as we unite all our prayers in the Lord's Prayer, we bring together a collection of voices representing the Pilot Diocese and some of our sports chaplains across England. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, National Sports Sunday here in Bradford. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to James Lusted for leading us so well today and everyone else who has taken part in today's service. But as we come to a close, I'm going to pass over to Bishop Libby as she closes today's service with a blessing and our final song. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us for our online weekly service to mark National Sports Sunday. We've been encouraged by a number of stories and we've seen how the church is involved in the community of sport. My prayer is that our commitment to this community will grow over the coming years. Thank you to everyone who has contributed to this service. After the final prayer of blessing, our service will conclude with a sung version of the UK blessing, sung by children from across the world. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>